Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of National Bank of Nigeria, I am pleased to welcome you all and thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today. My name is Temi Labo. I'm an executive internal audit in NBF, and I'll be hosting today's webinar on the occasion of the International Women's Day. As we all know, the world is going through an extraordinary phase, both from individual and business perspectives, with various challenges ahead of us. On one side, it's testing time for all of us, and on the other side, it's also forcing us to look beyond our normal way of doing business and adapting to the new norm. To help with this transition, we have with us today four inspiring women who their successful stories are as a result of them choosing to challenge themselves on a daily basis. NBF has always empowered women on every front and has supported SME in the UAE region for many years. Today's webinar is part of the knowledge series of the knowledge sharing efforts by the bank, where we invite successful entrepreneurs and female in leading roles so that all, all of us can hear their stories, understand their struggle, or most importantly, let them inspire us in believing that a dream is achievable like they are. I would also like to take advantage of today's session and remind you to check out NBF Connect. This is available on www.nbfconnect.ae. And if you haven't registered, please do. This is a great platform that's designed to empower SMEs, where you connect with other like-minded business owners, get updates on industry trends and market insights. Today, I have with me four women in different fields for the discussion. I will shortly ask them to introduce themselves, and then I'll come back to each one of them for a detailed one-on-one -on -one discussion. But before I forget, everyone, as soon as you join the webinar, you would have seen some poll questions. So if I can please ask you to answer these poll questions, they are for us to understand your thoughts so that our panelists can try and address them in the discussion. And finally, we have some Q&A. So at the end of the webinar, we would have time allocated for questions and answers. So if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A tab, which should be at the bottom of your screen. So first, I'm now going to start and introduce our panel. So the first one is Anil. If I hand over to you, Anil, for your introduction. Thank you, Temi, for the introduction. Um, my name is Ani, and I'm the CEO and Managing Director of CX Unicorn. Um, I am based out of Dubai. I'm a 39-year-old entrepreneur and a mother as well. So that's a brief intro about me. Thank you very much, Anil. And now I will pass on to Jennifer. Jen? Hi, I'm Jen Blandos. I'm the managing partner of Female Fusion here in the UAE. I'm a bit of an accidental entrepreneur. I first started getting into entrepreneurship about 20 years ago. So I ended up setting up my own business because I couldn't find a job. I had been living and working around Europe and I moved back to London and I couldn't find a job. Everywhere I went, they were like, you don't have London experience. You don't have a British accent. There's no work for you. <laughs> so, you know, back then 20 years ago, it was quite a challenging time. So I thought, well, what I can do is I can work internationally. And so what I did do is I set up a company that provided communications training and coaching for people internationally. So I did things like media trained government ministers or company executives and provided presentation coaching. And I went from just doing a bit of freelancing, which is what I thought it was going to be, to 18 months later having a business that had 15 people working for me and turning over seven figures. So it was something that I didn't expect, something that I hadn't planned to get into entrepreneurship. And then uh, many years, I had a number of different businesses in different countries. And 12 years ago, I came to Dubai 
And I came here initially to set up my company, train the staff and go back to London. And 12 years later, I'm still here. I've brought up my children here and this is my home. And over the past year, I've taken on more of a role of helping female entrepreneurs and using that experience to help them grow their businesses as well. Wow, that is definitely an introduction. And I think um, a lot of women are actually kind of in that position with the pandemic where they probably have to create something for themselves. But we will come back to that um, during a one-on-one -on -one discussion. Thank you very much for that, Jennifer. Jennifer. If I could pass on to Sumaya for our introduction, please. Hi, Temi. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be part of the panel. Uh, my name is Sumaya Dabbar. I am a Saudi architect um, educated in the UK. I set up Dabbar Architects, uh, my own practice, 12 years ago. Um, having uh, lived and worked uh, abroad, I came back to the region about 25 years ago uh, to work here initially and uh, started my business and uh, happy to say that uh, my practice is one of the first IRBA chartered practices in the region. And uh, since we've started, we've won uh, numerous awards uh, for the projects and the designs we've done. So uh, uh, I'm also happy to say I'm backed up by uh, a fantastic team, um, many women, uh, as well as great, great men and women in my team. Uh, so uh, I feel quite blessed. Uh, at this point in my life. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, I think you're definitely the epitome of we can't do it alone. We need that support. So we'll come back to the journey because I think the world of architect is an interesting one, but we'll come back to that in the one on one. And Thank finally, you. but at least we have our very own um, Watfa. Watfa, if I could pass over to you for your introduction, please. Thank you, Terry. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, NBF, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to be here. Uh, I would like to, to express uh, pride and honor over the great development and progress achieved by the UAE women. This is all guided by the wise vision of the leadership and the support of the mother of the nation, Sheikha Fatma bin Tabarak. Um, so my name is Wotfa Abdul Karim, and I have 10 years banking experience, four years in retail, in a branch product and channel, six years in HR, um, I'm an IT graduate, uh, CIPD member, assessor at DHDA, Dubai HR Award. Um, I'm a certified coach. Um, I would say that uh, my strength is uh, I'm a mother of two brave boys, Mohammed and Ali. Uh, my role models in my life are my parents, my father, Abdul Karim, and my mother, Leila. My three sisters are my best friends, and uh, my four brothers are my heroes. That's all about it. Thank you so much for that, Wafa, and for the personal touch. We can feel it. Um, I hope everyone in the audience could tell we definitely have such a, um, amazing, inspiring women um, that have done it all. So it's definitely going to be a good session. So now I'm going to start um, a one-on-one -on -one discussion. So first of all, I'll go with Annie and then go through the other panelists. So that way we can actually get into detail in terms of understanding the journey. So, Annie, I guess, I mean, this is an inevitable question. Um, you had, you had, a, you were in a comfortable position. You had, you were very um, successful in your career in the corporate world and in a particular industry. Um, and then to transition from that into something slightly new, being technology and something that's not necessarily considered a conventional female territory. That must have been quite a big, um, a big decision. And I guess we just want to understand the journey. Can you tell us how it all began from where you were before? To sure, sure. I'd love to share my journey. So I've been, um, I've been a banker before that. I've been a copywriter, marketing professional for many years. So having worked in the corporate world, um, one of the things I came across at many occasions was that women were not given the right uh, level of promotions, recognitions within the organization. So uh, there, were, there was a time when I, in my career when I was due for a big promotion and I was denied the promotion because purely because it, it, was, it was assumed that you know, as a woman, I cannot lead on a senior position. And that was a moment where I, I realized that 
no, I need to go and create that environment where women support women. Because one of the biggest areas where I felt left out in the corporate world was if a woman was successful, she would not encourage other women. So there was there was always, uh, you know, that, you know, men would always, you know, support each other, but women wouldn't. So that truly inspired me. And one fine day, at, I was on a very senior position. I was on a VP role and I said, no, I mean, this is not going to work out. So I, I will go ahead and start something of my own. And at that point, I was, I was just starting off as an entrepreneur where I come from a family from a very small town in India, a very humble beginnings, mostly people in academics, not into, you know, doing business and doing business was something considered in our family is like, oh my God, you're going to take a big risk in your life. We're all working in a very secure kind of a lifestyle. We're all ha working as either professors, lecturers, doctors, and then suddenly you go and do your business. So I said no, but then that's the bold step I want to take. I went ahead and uh, I launched CX Unicorn in November 2017. And a lot of people told me that, you know what? Uh, so one of the one of my bosses who denied the promotion to me, you know, before I decided, when I told that I was going to start my own company, came and told me, you know, worst case scenario, what's going to happen, Ani? You will not succeed. Then you can come back and work. You know, you can work in the same organization. I'll help you get a job. I said, you know what? That's not going to happen <laughs> because if I'm going to put my head to it, I'm going to make it happen. If if worst case, I will not come back and work with you. That That's what I said. And I moved out. And then after about two years, uh, the same gentleman who told me that, you know, you can come back and work. Uh, came back to me, said, can I invest in your company? I said, I'm sorry, I don't need investments. <laughs> I need you to encourage women around you. I need you to support the women that you come across. Do not demotivate them and do not say things such as, you know, what if you don't succeed? Because it's all about what if you succeed? What if you do extremely well? How can you do better? What can I do to help you? And that mindset of supporting women and people with dreams, whether they are women, men, any, uh, you know, any nationality, any gender, any age group, you must be open to encouraging people. I work in, an, now I run uh, CH Unicorn and I work with so many young dynamic women coming from diverse backgrounds around the world. And the way we work together is, is like we support each other. And it's a very positive culture. And that's, that's what I'm very proud of. And I think those those were my humble origins from India, which taught me to always encourage if somebody has a dream, somebody wants to go and achieve something, encourage that person, guide that person, support that person. So that was that was what led me to go ahead and start CX Unicorn. And that's the dream behind CX Unicorn. No, and that's why um, it's quite interesting to hear that because we especially going for that transition where you must be going through a lot of oh what if am i going to succeed you already have doubts within yourself to then have someone very senior um, um someone very senior basically kind of telling you that you're not going to succeed i think in, i mean well done to you for actually being able to respond back that you are going to succeed is that determination that's definitely needed um the other thing i had and i think we from our conversation, we talked about your partnership with big organizations, one of them being Microsoft. I guess what I want to what I wanted to ask is what are the unique skill sets that you feel like had benefited you as a woman when you're pitching for a project or pitching for something with big organization coming from a smaller side? Right. So one of the most inspiring things about Microsoft is though it's a very large organization, the way they work with their customers, the way they work with their partners, they work with a mindset of a startup. They work with an approach which is more, uh, you know, close to reality when it comes to interacting with the customers. And that uh, mindset of a startup, the nurturing mindset, and that quality comes from a woman. You know, it's it's a real quality that a woman has to nurture a relationship, nurture an organization, to nurture 
digital transformation in organizations. And that, with that approach, when we appro when we work on projects with Microsoft, I think that is something which is a very, a very distinct feature in CX Unicorn. And the way we are recognized by Microsoft today across not only UAE, but across the world for the work that we have done on Microsoft Teams in particular, especially during the time of pandemic, when uh, Microsoft was really looking for partners who had that growth mindset, who wanted to work with clients to find solutions which are you know, smart, cost effective, very much driving the needs of the individuals to be able to understand and relate with the people uh, who require those solutions and to be able to tailor them in, in the most uh, smart way possible, in the most empathetic way possible. I think that has been one of our winning factors and that is why our UI, UX capabilities, our uh, ability to design uh, customer experiences, user experiences has been a big differentiator with Microsoft. So we're very grateful that we are partners with Microsoft. In fact, we get a lot of um, you know, support and encouragement from within Microsoft with the leadership of Microsoft as well, not just from here in the UAE, but also from Seattle. And we, we, we work on a lot of engineering initiatives with Microsoft, which are cutting edge and which are yet to be released in the market. So getting that exposure on, only comes from that spirit that we want to nurture we want to build new, uh, you know, new initiatives and new ideas and collaboration with each other. Yeah, I think it, it, it's interesting that um, people tend to forget when you're dealing with technology or when you're working with technology, that it boils down to the human beings. So it's that nurturing part, it's understanding what people need um, to be able to kind of meet their solution. So definitely see that as a skill set. and. For every woman listening, that's something that we have. So let's not um, be shy to utilize our nurture inside, our creativity side, even when it comes to work. Um, and I know this is one of the problems um, in terms of life, work, personal life, and health. But I know, Anil, you have done a lot in the well-being space. Um, I was just wondering if there's anything you'd like to share with our audience on how to maintain a good harmony between work, life, mental and physical state in this DNA. Absolutely. I think that balance is key and especially as a as an entrepreneur, as a as a businesswoman where, where you are handling so many different aspects of your business and then you are handling your family as well. At that point, maintaining that balance and to be able to uh, to you know understand uh, the the clear boundaries between work and life and then striking that balance becomes very important so one of the things i would say i was gifted from my childhood was meditation and in our family we've been practicing meditation for several years that keeps me calm and you know peaceful even in difficult situations even if there is a big debate argument i am i'm quite relaxed i i look at the situation I, I don't get tangled into the situation. I step back and look at it from, from a perspective, how can I resolve it rather than getting tangled into the situation? So meditation uh, does really help. Five minutes in the morning, five to 10 minutes in the evening is what I do. So they're very simple techniques like breathing exercises. We call them pranayam in Sanskrit, where you breathe in, hold your breath and breathe out. So these uh, techniques really relax your mind I also sit down and close my eyes, try to sort out the thoughts in my head, segregate them in the morning, and then, you know, try to put attention on every single thought and say, okay, this is how I'm going to tackle this task during the day. And that kind of, you know, uh, silent meditation with, you know, soothing music in the morning just kind of puts me in, in a state of balance. And I think if we, if we meditate and if we introspect, I think that really helps us keep that balance throughout the day. No, I think that's very, I, I do agree with you. I think I, I started meditating this year and it's really helped to just kind of keep out all the noise and just kind of set your day right. So every morning I try, every morning apart from the weekend, I'm still trying to get into the routine. Um, thank you very much for that. I think, especially in this pandemic, um, we've locked down and, um, so working from home and all the changes, I think that's really, really important for everyone to 
kind of remember to take care of themselves and do whatever is required to kind of get your mind right as you start the day. So my last question for you, Anil, is just if there's one advice you'd like to give our audience, anything, any tip that you feel like has helped you during your journey and you want to share with our audience, can we please have it? Sure. So the one advice that I would give you is that never give up on yourself. Never, never stop believing in your dreams. Uh, believe in yourself. Uh, if somebody tells you that you cannot do something, that means you can. So always remember that and never give up. So that's my advice to all the women listening in. I think that's definitely that's definitely a great advice because at some point we all feel the challenges is just overwhelming and too much. And it's just easier to, to just give in and give up, but you need to persevere like you have. And I, for one, I'm extremely grateful that, you know, your ability to persevere has um, turned out successfully. And you're now in a position where the gentleman was asking to invest in your company, but you don't need it. So um, it's a message for all. Um, persevering is important. When you have a dream, you literally have to keep your dream to yourself and work, do whatever is required to help achieve that dream. So thank you so much, Anil. We'll come back to you later on during the Q&A session. But thank you for that short, but very, very um, inspiring discussion. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank you. So now I'm gonna pass on to Jennifer um, to have a, a short discussion with Jennifer. Jennifer, I think for me, from the intro, it's clear that you're currently doing a lot for women entrepreneurs within different regions and different countries, actually. Um, what I'm excited to hear about, and I'm sure our audience are, is that platform that has been created um, to help women create business connection opportunities and also kind of help them deal with, um, address areas that they're not necessarily strong in. Can you tell us more about your journey? I know you had mentioned a little bit. Can you tell us more about your journey into this career path that you fell into and it's now become something that you actually probably wish, I wish I had thought of that before. And yeah. By your journey. And then also how other women can benefit from this platform. We know it's funny. I always said that after I finished my entrepreneurship journey, I always wanted to do something good. And I wanted to do something like work for the United Nations or work for some NGO. And uh, I, I took on the role with Female Fusion last summer. I'm the managing partner. My my business partly, partner, Kelly Whitehead, founded Female Fusion almost six years ago. And Female Fusion initially started just as a Facebook group, a Facebook group for women in UAE. We were all friends, exchanging ideas and talking about business. So where could I find this? Where could I find a printer? I need someone to audit my accounts. Who's the best person? And it grew from that and it was so helpful that we invited our friends and they invited their friends. And we've grown to a community of over 15,000 people, 15,000 business women, entrepreneurs within the UAE who are part of that community. But then we found as well that there's only so much you can do on a Facebook group and to be able to have more meaningful connections, we needed to kind of turn that into something that was a bit more structured. So we, we formed something called the network last September, which is almost what we call our premium membership. Uh, but that membership is only 150 dirhams a month. So it's not very expensive. And as part of that, people get access to a very committed community of business women who are intent on growing their businesses. And it's from everywhere from people who are just starting out all the way to women who have had their businesses in the UAE to 20, 30 years and maybe have hundreds of employees working for them. So it's really very much a support network for women who are in business. So we have face-to-face -face networking events. We do um, online training. We do some face-to-face -face training. We have a lot of webinars and we also have a really powerful online portal which has a number of templates and resources that people can access. So for example, we have a whole section on legal issues. So if you want to know anything related to legal, 
for your business, you can go on to there and you have access to that. If you're hiring somebody new or you're interviewing somebody for your business, we have a document which has a list of 100 potential interview questions you could ask people. So it's basically gold that's within, within that portal that people can use as well as the face-to-face -face networking. And what we're finding is that when women make connections, powerful things happen, both online and offline. So we found, for example, that a lot of women meet and you would naturally think that they would be competitors, but they found ways to work together. And that's been something that we're really proud about. For example, we have three ladies who each own PRO businesses in the UAE, and you would think that they'd be competing for each other for business. But when they met, they're like, oh, I specialize in free zones. Oh, I specialize in DED. Oh, I specialize in like, the Northern Emirates. And so they actually found that they could work together and support clients together. And they've actually found that they've grown their businesses as a result of that. So it, it's such a wonderful thing to bring a community of women so diverse. It's reflective of Dubai, all levels of experience, right down from just starting out to 20, 30 years plus together to support each other in business and entrepreneurship. No, I think a good friend of mine actually told me something last year, which is it doesn't have to be lonely at the top. And I feel like the women supporting women is such yeah. an important part of that career, of that journey, especially if you are an entrepreneur, you can't, you don't know it all by yourself, but yeah. there are people out there that have done it. So why don't you connect with people and hopefully avoid some of the odds that they did when they were just starting out. Yeah. So um, I'm sure any entrepreneurs out there will be going onto the platform and trying to find out exactly um, what it is about, get more information and how they can build these meaningful connections that, that's available. Um, the other question I have for you, Jen, you mentioned that you juggled a few positions. So I know currently you're working as well. You have other businesses as well that you're managing. I do, yeah. And you, from <laughs> our conversation and from Googling you, um, you're definitely excelling in each area. Um, I guess the question is, any advice that you like to share on how to manage um, and balance having different ads or different opportunities or different um, projects ongoing? So how do you manage that? I think it's really important to prioritize and to be able to get very good at planning. And look, I don't get it right all of the times. And I find sometimes that I do get overwhelmed, but I do find that when I take the time to plan, to schedule, and to also um, look at things and it would be, so for example, I'm, I'm a famous list maker, but I was finding that I wasn't getting things finished on my list. I'm sure a lot of people find that, that you'll start out the week and you've got 20, 25 things on your list, but actually maybe you get through half of them. Or I was finding sometimes I was having hundreds of things on my list. And so what, what I do as well is I'll look at that and go, right, what are things that are priorities for me? I absolutely have to get done on a deadline. What are things that I can get other people on my team to do? Or what else can I find that I can outsource? And this is one of the things I say to, to entrepreneurs a lot of times is that entrepreneurs can be very busy working in their business rather than on their business. And it's really important to make sure that you can be strategic and have the, the bigger picture of your business rather than you know trying to work how to do Google AdWords and balance your books and because maybe that's not your superpower. So focus on what is your superpower, what you're good at, what excites you, and then find ways to, to get support in the other areas. And then also as well, look at that list and go, okay, what's not gonna matter if I don't get that done? It's not essential, I'm going to park that. Sorry, I think that, that is such um, a great advice. I think even although I'm not an entrepreneur um, in the corporate world, I'm actually making notes because it's just these are key things that we all need to do, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're in a working um, or you're in a corporate environment, is just being mindful of this and kind of prioritizing them too so that you can have your um, your day is better planned. Yeah, so thank I think... 
I was going to say, I think one thing that's mm -hmm. also important that I, I think all of us women do, and especially in the pandemic, maybe even more, is that we also need to take time for self care and for yes. ourselves, because if you're not okay, it's going to make it difficult for you to run your business or difficult for you to be there for your family. So, for example, I've started uh, for a while now that I actually don't start work until 10 o'clock in the morning. And so I leave that gap where I will go to the gym, go exercise, meditate, do something like that. So by the time I get to the office, I'm going to be much more focused and structured in the day. You know, I think that's extremely important. The, the more you take care of yourself, the, the more productive you can be. Uh, my final question for you before we come back to Q&A is kind of the same. If there's one advice you'd like to give our audience, what would it be? So I think the most important thing that I've learned over my 20 years being an entrepreneur is to find your support network. Because when you have people that can support you, whether it's family or friends or other entrepreneurs, that it makes the journey less lonely, but it also gives you the opportunity to talk to people who have had other experiences. And what I found and what I hear a lot of other entrepreneurs say is that your family will, will be important to give you the support of running a business. But unless they have entrepreneurial experience, they don't understand what it's like. So it's important to reach out to those people who are actually working in business, whether it's other women or men who are entrepreneurs that are able to support you in that journey. No, thank you so much, Jennifer, um, for that discussion. I definitely made a lot of notes and I think, yes, um, your right is getting that support system and you kind of need both family support system as well as a platform that allow you to connect with other like minded um, entrepreneurs. And in this case, the female, um, the female ones and a platform such as yours. So thank you so much, Jen. I will now move on to Sumaya. Just to ask that a few questions. Um, the first question, Sumaya, is the world of architecture is one that's very male dominated. And to have chosen a, a career at a very young age, from what you have told me, is quite inspiring. Can you tell us what led, why you chose this field? Um, yes. Uh... Actually, I grew up in Saudi Arabia, and as a child, we uh, my, we lived in Jeddah. I was born there, and uh, we used to go to Taif, where my grandparents lived, um, every weekend, more or less. And Taif is um, quite high altitude, 1,800 meters. It's a mountainous region, uh, only a couple of hours uh, drive from Jeddah. And going up there i was just so impressed by the environment there which was just the, the the size of the mountains around you and and how that made me feel um and then age 13 moving to the united kingdom uh where family moved and i ended up going to school there it was a very different environment and you had uh buildings and uh, man-made structures and i just really was very curious and fascinated how those made uh, us feel in our environment and that really curiosity led me to find out a little bit more uh, uh, about uh, the built environment and about architecture and uh, yeah that's how my path really started um, with the idea that maybe I can impact the way people feel in their environment in a positive way. Um, yes and, and the, the second part of your question actually um, I mean, coming from Saudi, I think I grew up in a time where there was a lot of optimism and, uh, and I'm very grateful for that because that really imprinted in me the, the idea that anything is possible. Um, so, um, yeah, just to, those dreams, those early dreams really were not sort of hampered about practicalities, um, which is a good thing in, in one sense, uh, but on a practical sense, you know, you, you come across other obstacles. But really that uh, dream, uh, the early dreams really that fueled my uh, passion to pursue this career. 
I, I really love uh, sort of your childhood and where you grew up um, kind of inspired the passion to go into something that I'm sure by the time, at the time you were getting into that field, um, most of your colleagues were probably men. And I'm sure you you were one of the anchor women in there. Um, I guess what, and I know a lot of people on this, on this webinar are probably going through the same thing where, you know, they have a dream. It might be for something we wanted to achieve when we're really young or a recent dream. I thought um, what I would like to ask is if you could let us know if there was a particular point of time where you the realization that your dream might not be achievable happened. So if there was something like a challenge or something that literally was trying to take your dream away. And so if you could let us know that instance and then what tips you had to you did. Um, tips on what you did at the time to overcome them. I think that would be a good discussion for our audience. Uh, yes, I, I recall two uh, actually incidents in, throughout my life and career. Uh, one, uh, when I was a student two years into my architecture study, uh, I studied at Bath University. Um, I had uh, been given uh, a scholarship uh, from Saudi to study architecture. And the regulations changed at that point where women were not allowed to study anymore uh, in this field. Uh, we were allowed to study interior design. So I was uh, really challenged to either change my major to something that was considered more suitable for women, or I would lose my scholarship. And uh, you know, there was a lot of anger and fury at that point, but I was also very fortunate that my family uh, supported my decision and to support it, me to pursue my dreams. So that, that uh, allowed me to uh, continue studying independently. Um, and the second part actually was uh, in 2000 and between 2006 and 2007, I had decided to, to go and, and set up my own practice and uh, there was a um, at the time, uh, there was a restriction uh, for uh, people to register a, 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 an architectural practice in the UAE. You had to be a UAE national. Um, and I you know, looked at lots of different options and over a, a couple of years, finally, I think the regulations changed and it was open to GCC as well to open uh, the practice independently. So uh, I think those, Two points, you know, that's where I really kind of um, felt that I was held back, but it's just through perseverance that that uh, that things worked out. And that's exactly what I was going to say. I think what you described to us is a story of a childhood dream. And just like anything, it comes with challenges, it comes with threats. But if it's what you really want to do and you're willing to persevere, things do turn up beautifully like like yours are um, going from the corporate world to kind of build your understanding to actually creating your own organization so yes um, perseverance is is a word that is very important especially when you're trying to follow your passion it's extremely needed the last question i have for you sumaya is kind of the same is just any tip you any tip or advice you will give our audience maybe just especially breaking away from the corporate world and taking on that bold decision to start your own thing. Um, do you have any tips for our audience, please? Yes, I think with any, um, I suppose it's really with any, any kind of uh, big transition or uh, between, you know, one career and another or, or you know, changing from corporate to, to, uh, entrepreneurship and having your own business. Uh, I meet actually often a lot of people who are on the edge of that and maybe not happy in, at work, uh, but they're not ready to make the leap. And I think it is a kind of a leap of faith um, and uh, which has to be really fueled by passion because you're not gonna jump um, without having that, uh, that desire and that dream that is going to support you and allow you to fly. 
so uh, that uh, really that that gives you the courage also I believe that challenges and I think when we come to any challenge obstacles if we're focused too much on the obstacle then really we're not gonna we're not gonna take that leap you you focus on the positive you focus on the opportunities um you focus on the possibilities and what i think also you know sometimes you're fearful that you will fail but then the other times that i made me realize in my career that actually if i don't do this i'm denying the opportunity for for um the benefit of what i can uh contribute to to the region um particularly i think in architecture in a region where there is um it's very male dominated and the and the buildings that we're surrounded with in our cities particularly in the gulf are um, very much um, designed by men and and i think there isn't the without the diversity of having the perspectives of, of, a, of, a, of a feminine perspective uh, we really lose out a society and a community uh, the value of having that different perspective uh in the way how we live the way we create communities the nurturing that happens all of these qualities really um are unique to us and we can add so much value to our communities by being able to really contribute fully uh in the way our environment is built so uh, you know the tips uh, is really to look again look at the 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 opportunities and don't look at just from your own perspective, look at it from a global perspective, what value you can add. Um, and also, I think, I think, you know, I, I echo what, what the, uh, what Annie and, and Jen had said about uh, um, keeping a balance in your life. Uh, I am a yoga practitioner and I've done that since I was a student. So for, for about 30 years, and I find that really helps uh, to manage the stress of life, uh, running a business, um, and and having a, a being part of of a, of a family unit. So um, these, I think, uh, when you're juggling many things, these things really anchor you uh, to help you uh, stay grounded and follow the, the cause that you're, uh, that you're uh, aiming for. And thank you so much, Somaya. I think that's the benefit of doing something that you're passionate about, because then you get to bring your full self into it. So um, thank, you for the, thank you for the discussion, really inspiring. I think um, similar to what Anil had said at the beginning is just sometimes, and similar to what Jen had said, sometimes you have to create the environment you want to be. So sometimes you just either create a career path for yourself or create or start your own organization where you can embed the culture and the values that are important to you. So thank you so much for, for taking us through that journey. We really appreciate that. And I will come back to you during the Q&A. Thank you very much. And now I have Watfa. Watfa, so I guess my first question for you is, it's quite interesting that you started your, educate, like your educational journey in IT, in one field, IT, and then instantly before actually starting your career journey, you decide to move into HR. Um, can you let us know what was the drive for this? Sure. So, um... It says, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. So, uh, of course, this expression doesn't mean that you will literally never work a day in your life. It, it, it implies that when you love your work, it feels like a choice more than a load. Uh, being part of HR team, it adds a value and a meaning to my life. Somehow, um, it fills my soul with a joy. Uh, what I'm literally passionate about uh, is that in HR, I'm allowed the, the privilege of uh, helping others to know themselves and maximize their uh, natural talent. Uh, see, in HR, we are not just helping the organization uh, 
to improve the performance of the organization. But uh, we also um, enhance the employee exp uh, experience. Um, now, uh, over many years in HR, if I can just uh, mention two things that I really love, is that um, I love to get uh, interact with a variety of people and every interaction Every interaction is a learning opportunity for me. Uh, secondly, would be that uh, the people I work with, uh, I have the honor of working with the most dedicated HR professionals in the field, starting from Mr. Abdullah and uh, my beloved HR team. No, I think I think that's actually a good quote um, that you mentioned there was fun. Do something that you love and you never have. and it wouldn't feel like work because it's what you're passionate about and is the drive that you're going into. The other question I wanted you mentioned that you are a mom to two beautiful boys. Um, and obviously I work with you in the same bank. I know you have managed to cultivate a successful career um, without the personal and without a personal life being in the way. So I guess the question is, how do you juggle between the work and personal life? How do you manage to differentiate both of them and still excel in both areas? Yes, so uh, these days everyone is really busy. You may have responsibility to your family, your work, your children activities, uh, your community. All these are uh, computing our, our valuable uh, attention. Sometimes we let uh, our schedule run our lives and uh, it push our priorities as opposite of uh, taking charge of our schedule and priorities. Uh, I would say manage yourself, not time. Uh, everyone has the exact time, same amount of time, 24 hours in a day. Uh, many days, you know, we wish that we could just attack a few hours uh, just to finish a project, uh, have a rest, or to do other things that we'd like to be able to squeeze into, you know, our busy day. Uh, I would say is managing yourself it reflect the sense of responsibility in what you do in a day and in a lifetime. Uh, being proactive, realizing the power of choice, and uh, knowing that uh, what you do have a control over. So it's managing yourself. No, thank you. I'm going to have to take some of that advice for myself. Um, I, just the last question, just a quick one. If there's one advice you give our audience, what has kept you focused throughout the whole time? Do you have one final tip for our audience, please? Live, live in the moment. Uh, it is tough to stay mentally focused when you are ruminating about the past or worrying about the future uh, or, or turned even out of the present moment uh, for some other reasons. You have probably heard uh, people talking about uh, the importance of being present. It's all about putting away the, di uh, the distractions, uh, whether they are the mobile phone, on the physical mobile phone or mental, your worries, uh, concerns. Uh, I would say that uh, being fully mentally engaged in the current moment, live the moment. Thank you so much, Watfa, for that. And, and thank you to each of the ladies. I think the discussion has definitely been exciting. It's been inspiring, and I really, really hope the audience are getting some tips and advice on what um, on how to kind of enhance, even if it's the skill set or just the getting the feel that if you want to start some, if you want your, if you want to achieve your dream, you kind of have to just start. So we have a couple of minutes. I'm just going to try and go through some of the Q and A questions that um, we've received. So I think the first one um, is, and I'm just reading this out, being so busy with home and work every day, how do you identify what is your passion? If I can pass this to Sumaya. So Sumaya, um, I'll just repeat the question. Being so busy with home and work every day, how do you identify what is your passion? Um, I think uh, you you know what is your passion when you what you do um, um, 
brings you to life really you feel alive and and it doesn't feel like work when you do something that you love and you enjoy and you it just fuels your energy so i, I think uh, uh, somebody told me you know the exhaustion is really uh, it, there is the antidote to exhaustion not necessarily rest is actually doing what you love because if you're doing something that um is not your heart is not in it and you just feel drained all the time it really drains your energy and uh so it's not necessarily how much time or, or how hard you work is is really the energy that fuels you from doing what you love so um i think if you can find things that that give that you notice i mean you just have to be aware and and, and see what brings you alive uh, what is it that uh can uh really you know uh, have that sense of being alive and 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 enjoying what you do that is really start the way to start identifying is this where my passion is so much for that, Sumaya. I think it's really important identify the passion and just kind of work towards it. And I guess in life, there's always going to be challenges. So right now is working for Mo. I'm sure in a few years there will be other challenges, but you have to keep and stick with that dream and keep with that passion. So thank you very much for that. Another question that I have, um, well, I'll, I'll probably pass this to Anil. Um, and if there's a question that it said, what would you advise young women to focus on? Those who are just starting their career. Any specific advice for our young women? They did for young women in there, <laughs> for our young women that are just embarking on their career journey. Sure. Sure. So for women who are starting their career journeys, it's very important that, again, as um, Sumaya just said, do what you really love, identifying what gives you true joy. Uh, and you can do it again and again every day without feeling tired or bored. I think that's one of the very important um, aspects about selecting what career path you want to go for or what, what direction you want to go for. And the second most important thing is, please, always pay a lot of attention and focus to your self-respect. So as a woman, you must have a lot of, um, you, you should value yourself. You should truly respect yourself when you, uh, you should, if somebody sidelines you and you're starting off your career, somebody tells you, no, you could do something small and you believe you can do something big. Believe in yourself, work hard, genuinely work hard and, uh, and, why not? Why can't you do what you dream to do? So basically believing in yourself and just going with it, going with your gut feel and saying that, yes, I can do it. I think that's that's very, very important for women who are starting off their careers. So don't let anybody sideline you because that's that happens a lot for women, especially when you are starting, you're young, you're just out of college. doing something insignificant. So don't accept that. No, thank you very much, Hanil. I think that is the foundation. And if you're just starting your career, the most important things to you are your foundation. So yes, value and respect yourself. And that would definitely pay a lot, pay off. Um, there's a question in which I actually think it's perfect for Jennifer. So I'm gonna ask Jen to please answer this. And I guess this is someone I've said, networking is not always easy. Any suggestions? And I guess <laughs> you know, as women, sometimes we do feel like, yeah, I'd rather be at the back of the room and just keep quiet rather than, you know, walking the floor and talking to people. How can people get over this sort of shyness, something that, to be honest, is kind of inbuilt in us, so kind of coming out of our shield? How can people, any suggestion on how to get over this? Look, I, I think gone are the days of networking where you would go to events and people would hand out business cards. Um, that's not really what networking is about now. And we have so many women, for example, in female fusion who are very introverted and they don't feel 
comfortable going out and kind of meeting lots of different people because they want to be able to to feel confident and to be able to make those contacts but especially if they're very introverted or very shy it can be hard so i would say probably to start off with a, a really good way to do that is to start online to be part of a business group so for example in female fusion we get to know each other online and you get to have a sense of what those people are like and then we also have a lot of zoom meetings and when we have zoom meetings sometimes it's for a, a knowledge sharing session or a training session so for example tomorrow we're having a session on how to create videos for your business so to be able to do it by yourself with your phone and stick it up on social media. And so the ladies get to meet things like that. But then what we find as well is that when we do have face-to-face -face meetings, that people are so friendly that you don't need to worry that you're coming there by yourself and you're gonna stand in the corner because there's always women who go up because they've all been like that. Like they've turned up the first time and they've, they've not known anyone. We had one woman who contacted us and she said, I don't know if I should go just to let you know, I'm so painfully shy. I, I don't even know if I could speak. And she came to our first meeting and I kind of looked out for her and she could barely speak. She just, she was so shy and didn't have the confidence. So I introduced her to a, to a few ladies and she got talking to them and explained some of the work that she did. And now she comes to every single event and she's she knows everybody and she's going around talking. She's still shy. But she said to she said to me when we were leaving one event, she said, this is the happiest that I've been in years. And she said, I feel like I'm heard and I'm seen and I'm talking to people who who understand what I'm going through. So I want women to know that even if you're shy, you know, you're not alone. And, you know, find your tribe, find your group of women and they don't have to be your friends and in business it's probably better to have people that aren't your friends because you'll have more in common with them find them and it just kind of all falls into place you don't need to be worried about it uh, i think that's definitely a good advice um one thing i just wanted to kind of add on with the pandemic everything's kind of moved online now so you can network easily just do it in your home house um, behind the screens, I guess that made it easier. And coming back to what Jen said, when you go to this event, there's always a woman there that is happy to chat to everyone. Yes, I am that woman. So there will always be someone there that's willing to talk to everyone. So all you have to do is just walk in. So I'm sure someone will walk towards you and ask. So mindful of time, we just have one final question that I would um, ask Watfa. Um, I think the question someone has asked that focus is key, but staying focused is quite difficult. Any suggestions? So what far? I actually think this is quite important. This is probably more relevant for you having the two kids and working for mom. How do you manage to stay focused? So if you could just give us a quick one on, on that, what far, please? I'm just waiting for Watfa. I think she's still there. Okay. Um, Apologies, I'm here. Sorry for that. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we are talking about technology, and sometimes we do have these technical difficulties. But yes, did you get my question, Watfa? How do you stay focused? Um, yes. So, uh, the question was about uh, being focused. Um, see, the ability to concentrate on something um, it's, uh, uh, in your environment or uh, in a direct mental effort, it's very critical. Uh, uh, it's either whether you are, you are trying to, uh, you know, to finish a report or you are competing in a marathon, uh, your ability to focus can mean the difference between success and failure. Uh, fortunately, what um, um, I have read in an article that uh, the focus is uh, is a lot like a mental muscle. Uh, so the more you work in building it up, the stronger it gets. Uh, uh, be 
before I, I can I can give this advice that before you start working uh, toward improving your uh, uh, your mental focus, you might want to begin in assessing it. So how to assess that your focus is good or you need the practice? Uh, it says that if you find yourself, it is easy for you to, to stay alert. Uh, if you set your goals and breaks uh, up into smaller parts and then you come uh, after the break, you get back to work immediately. So if you have this three, being alert, uh, having the breaks and come up uh, back to work uh, with with the, you know with the passion to to focus and continue your work. It seems that uh, the, 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 this probably ha it means that you have a fairly good concentration skills. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you so much, Watwa. I am mindful of time. I am an auditor and a sticker for time, and yeah. I notice we've just gone um, one minute past, so I will round it up. But honestly. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of our panelists and our audience as well. Thank you for the questions, for answering the poll. I hope the last one hour has been inspiring for you. Definitely has been for me. I've made notes and I'm going to go back to them and reference. Um, just to kind of summarize what everyone has said and in terms of the top tips. So we have never give up, um, prioritize and plan, find your support system, perseverance, Take the leap faith, especially find something you're passionate about. And then we have manage yourself and that manage value and respect yourself. So if I could leave everyone with one quote is my favorite quote that I only found out about it about a year ago, but it's made such a, a big impact in my life. And is um, it says we delight in the beauty of butterfly but really admit the changes he had gone through to achieve that beauty. And what is what I took from it is it's a journey. Y you have to start. You have to start, make a decision to start and that you follow the journey through. Yes, it will be challenging. Um, so it, there'll be threats. It would, there'll be struggles, but nothing in life is ever so easy. Well, not for everyone. So, the, the main thing you can do is choose to start, choose to challenge yourself, like the theme of the International Women's Day. Today, we've had the opportunity to listen to women that I found them courageous, audacious, bold, unapologetic. And each one of them I've chosen at a particular point in their career to challenge, challenge whatever it might be. So if there's one thing I'll leave you with is, um, it's a journey and you have to start. Just start the journey and enjoy it, enjoy the ride. So on behalf of National Bank of Fujira, thank you to everyone, to our panelists, to our audience, everyone for being taking part in this um, webinar. And I wish, I hope you guys have a good afternoon and last but not least, happy International Women's Day. Thank you everyone, bye. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Thank you.